Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast, the show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take on various topics that tend to bubble up when one goes off on this endeavor of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drost. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I am a designer and maker, and I teach and coach. Good to see you again, Rob. Good to see you, Jersey. How you doing? Did okay. We're one week in to this uh, creative challenge we call Art Sound Off. How are you feeling about it? Hmm. I would say, um, you know, pretty good overall. I've got that enthusiastic, um, you know, just showing up, getting ready for the for the thing, and 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 uh, just you know, feeling my podcasting journaling legs, and you know, I got that initial sprint. And I was probably sprinting faster than I could run sustainably. And now I got a, I got a stitch in my side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where you suddenly say like, Ooh, Ooh, my side. Oh, I, I got to start slowing down and pacing myself a little bit. Yep. Gotta uh, breathe. Oh, hope, I hope that person's around the bend with the water. I hope they have the water table around the bend. <laughs> Uh, yes, art sound off. I guess I should pull up on the screen just in case anybody is not familiar with it. Uh, so art sound off a month of art journaling. So it's a micro podcast challenge where we Rob and I take take this challenge on where we check in every day over the month of November with an audio journal of some kind. But we've adjusted the challenge in various ways so that there's like, uh, oh, gosh, what were the different levels? Um well, it, it's um, we really simplified it this year. And yeah, just we sort did. Of emphasized it's like choose your own challenge, do as many or as few as you want, do it publicly or privately, and just kind of really simplified it. The uh, art yeah. sound off page was was almost like a like showing up at one of those restaurants that has maybe too many things on their menu and too many <laughs> options on too many things. Right. So yeah, I, it just it hit me a little bit in my. Um, design elegance uh, sense where I was like, yeah, we could really hit the heart of this and just simplify and let all the complexity come from everyone else. And, you know, what happens when you think of doing this and what's your version of it? And if you'd like help, we've got prompts. So you don't have to just start with, with nothing, right? You can react to something for each day. Right, right. Yeah. Want. So we're, 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 most of us are familiar with these kinds of, of creative challenges like uh, NaNoWriMo, Inktober, 30 Characters in 30 Days, um, 24 Hour Comics Day, and so on. Um, and the Art Sound Off one, what we've done is we've tried to say, you know what, put your spin on it and check in as, as frequently or infrequently as you want. Use what technology you want. You can use video, you can use audio, you don't even have to share it if you don't want to. But the whole idea is to get people to practice this idea of talk, thinking aloud uh, and journaling their, their, their work. Um, and so given that we're a week in, we thought it might be a neat idea to check in, see how we feel about it, and maybe practice it a little bit on the show. This idea of practicing this journaling, like just so that we're not asking anybody to do anything we wouldn't do ourselves. Although... You know, we have like a thousand something podcasts behind us, so we have lots of practice <laughs> on this. But, but, yes. Well, I mean, is it? Let's see. In the in the kind of space that you can explore podcasting, are you always in a comfort zone? Are you are you ever in a in a, in a situation where you're like uh, a little bit unsure? Hopefully, yes. That's when I know that I'm doing something that's like meaningful and interesting. Uh, or at the very least, even if I fail, at least I'm going to learn something interesting, right? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's a signal I look for, right? Um, yeah, the, 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 the podcast where I feel like I showed up and I had a lot of knowledge on the subject and I had a lot of advice on the subject, usually the ones where I, I don't feel great when I go home, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> I feel like, oh, I think I just like, I think I just like, lectured a bunch of people and i never feel that's not a place where i feel at ease um afterwards um i, I feel the most the most satisfied in in a teaching environment and in, a, in when we're doing the show is when i feel like i'm learning as much as people might be learning from me right like if i'm walking away with something interesting to think about too or if i'm walking away with an interesting question that's like you know i don't know i'm, I'm gonna have to think about that for a bit um 
But what you just described to me is, um, I'm biased, but I find that th that is a skill and an asset that you've built over time, that you mm -hmm. found a way to be um, comfortable and curious while you're exploring and not necessarily working on, well, how do I share the answer and story without um, being too pedantic? I mean, that's one thing if you have it all pre-cooked and you're just you know, portioning it out and staging a message, whatever. And that's that kind of performance is a skill, but then you're, you're describing like sort of a side skill related on top of somewhere juxtaposed where you're saying you don't necessarily know the answer and you explore a bit. And that's, um, I think because you and I both are really into that, we can, we can overlook the uh, potential barrier that that can be for, mm. for others as far as mm. being, um, being comfortable in being, because it's almost, it's, you just, you just hack the matrix. Oh, great. You're comfortable being uncomfortable. Good for you. <laughs> well, and, and to be fair too, I mean, I feel like we're in, we're actually in the episode now. So let me just play some music just to okay. get us there. Just so that we know, I don't want to, <laughs> I, I don't want to uh, uh, not observe the traditions of this show. Um, so yeah, we're in the topic now properly. And I, I also want to say, to be fair, there's 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 discomfort and there's discomfort, right? Like there's there's certain things where it's like, well, I will not allow myself to be uncomfortable about this in public, right? Like I'll be uncomfortable about this in conversations with close friends in a private setting, but in 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 a performative performance sort of space, I don't. That's not a that's not a, a subject I like to really dig into. Mm. Um, so like create like discomfort with what I think about creativity and what I think about my work and what I think about uh, how I engage with my work and in certain pieces of my bi biography that in, that like I know in, uh, are informing my worldview about my work. Sure. Right. Yes. I, I, I guess you could say I hacked the matrix when it comes to that. But yeah, if you were to suddenly be like, hey, let's talk about your upbringing. <laughs> the show <laughs> let's talk about your childhood let's talk about uh past relationships on the show i'd be like hmm not cr not crazy about going there so yeah i uh, yes yeah. I, I i could i could be i could be uh, put on my heels very easily <laughs> when it comes to that oh it's very very interesting you say that i mean that's <laughs> where um that's that's where i got the stitch in my side i actually tried <laughs> and i canned it it's not being released right it's yeah. it's something I'm going to keep exploring and trying, but like, but essentially, um, you're you're describing the um, it's like that way to be industrious and of service where you're creative and helpful at the same time, and there's such a wide swath of possibilities to explore in that space. That in and of itself is a um, is a kind of um, skill to build. But then yeah. there's that other, you can still find territory that, that, that falls outside of that, where it's like, oh, okay, I can channel all these things into being of service. But then there's a couple things that that's, these are on the shelves up front. And there's a few th shelves in back that, no, we're not going there. Right? Right. Yeah. Same boat, honestly. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that that's not to be, uh, to place any kind of judgment on that. It's just more like the, you, you pick and choose what, what we get to pick and choose what areas we get to feel uncomfortable in, in a public space. Right. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And, but I think even, even the, like where we described being comfortable, that is, I mean, we, I mean, we've chatted, we've had guests on the show and, and I mean, you, you've had shows where podcasts, where that's the primary mechanism where is, is all this interviewing and, and um, I mean, so you encounter other other perspectives, other people, and, and creative folks that make um, and apply their skills in, in one context. But the skill of talking about it, it's not their not their jam or not yet, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, what's yeah? So it's it's really funny. It's like even though you can be comfortable with it, so why are why are we all fired up to do this if we're so comfortable to do it? Uh because oh, why are we so fired up to do it if because we're so comfortable so you're saying are you are let me let you like poke at the premise of the question um are you suggesting that because we're experienced at it and comfortable with it for the most part we should be less excited about it like it should be more prosaic well it's sort of saying um like for someone who's built a certain skill are they always celebrating a mile, a certain milestone of like, 
um, let's say a track runner uh, runs a really fast mile. Are they, are they, are they making that a big deal all the time <laughs> or uh, that kind of thing where it's, where it's sort of like, are, um, not that we should be less engaged about it, but like, um, it's, a, well, I guess I'm, uh, maybe that question is a train wreck and I'm going to try to pivot toward, um, okay. what if, let's see. So celebrating this, I feel like what we're saying is we've discovered a very useful thing so that this, this is useful and we appreciate it and want to share it. Is that, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So like, I guess I get it. That's what I get excited about. I get, I get excited about sharing and encouraging others to uh, practice and experience this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think I, I don't have to hold on to the value. I can share it and there's even more value. Yeah, right. well, I think I think we're both like predisposed to this too, where it's like when we get excited about something, we want everybody else to, to like know about why we're excited about it, right? Mm -hmm. It's 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 sure. the the old Carl Sagan quote. It's like like somebody asked him why he like you know uh, did all that that uh, advocacy for science, and he said, well, when you're in love, you want to tell the whole world about it. Um, mm. So. I, I feel like th th there's there's aspects of that in in all the things that I'm excited about. I like sharing the things that I'm excited about. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, th uh, to be and also just to be fair, I mean, this is I don't think this is an across the board thing with me. It's like there's things that I am genuinely truly excited about that are like that's for me. <laughs> this this moment this 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 experience is all mine and i get to drink it up and i'm not i'm not broadcasting this i'm not sharing this with the whole world because this is really about being like here and now and like experiencing this all for myself um and that's what that, that's where that back shelf thing comes in. The, the shelf and back is like stuff it's like this is just for me because the mm. i think that uh that is reasonable and human of us uh that we are not as as simple as all of just well this is a performer who just proselytizes and shares and pushes their the things they're excited about in the world right mm -hmm. well and especially so like i think inherently you're in the position of uh, you're okay we are performing and we are sharing what we love but we try to do it in a way that is um inclusive and not prescriptive and has uh like affordances and flexibilities where hopefully as we share it you find um if you find common ground it doesn't have to be the same exact precise portion of ground you can be a bit whatever your thing is and um and i think yeah and, and we'll we'll talk about that in the second half of the show and how for other uh folks out in the audience have taking have taken their journals and shared mm -hmm. them via art summed up but, yeah. Um, yeah. So for this first part, do you want to like the original plan was is for us to take a couple of the prompts and just model like a five minute journal on the topic? Do you want to try to do that? Mm -hmm. Are are you I feeling have a problem sufficient? Saying hello in less than five minutes, but yes. <laughs> um, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gosh. <laughs> It's it's impressive to me how 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 many th thoughts someone can share in like one minute. <laughs> you are who you are. This is part of the flavor of your character, Rob. And it's it's like what we come to. It's 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 really what we show up for. Is like like how how explicit and careful and uh, and thoughtful is he going to be about telling me about this grilled cheese sandwich? <laughs> Yeah, it's really something. Um, <laughs> it's you never yeah. do word salad, right? Like you don't just like blast a whole bunch of verbiage at me. It's like it's always like everything is carefully constructed, and there's like tangents and things, but the tangents are all really thoughtfully, thoughtfully explored and then rounded back. So I'm not I'm not complaining. It's uh, it's just salad salad where there's always <laughs> pieces and there's pieces by other pieces, and you can just you can zoom in you can and uh anyway yeah raising kids i'm noticing this trait in my in in others as well and i'm like wow this is uh <laughs> gonna be a whole new generation of saying hi in five minutes but anyway um okay so okay let's, so uh, uh, let's do it though let's i like the i like your setup let's go let's give it a try okay so i so, so since i teed you up and you know really like sold everybody on this idea that he's gonna watch this guy struggle to do something in five minutes um you can take 10, but I'm going to pick the prompt. Okay. And then you have to go for it. How does that sound? Okay. All right. So how mm -hmm. about, how about we start with, um, 
sleep. Prop 27 in the Art Sound Off series. Um, what do you what do you think about sleep, Rob? I I okay, so I I feel pretty uh you know naive and humbled about sleep about um thinking about my past self's um flippant relationship with it and how uh when I have thought of um I remember when I I think I've shared this little brief snippet of my past when I when I got into my sort of my first apartment and thought and felt this wave of choice and freedom and possibility right in front of me. One of the first things I thought you're going to go right out the door is sleep because now I can live and produce and make without this artifice of the flow of anyone else's day. I just determine it myself. I choose it. So it's going to happen. I'm free. And then I get tired and then, you know, and then maybe the, then my experiences with, with uh, sleep as a, as a, uh, a young adult were um, uh, really pushing myself until I fell asleep and I, I did way too many all nighters, way too many um, just things as far as a, a combinations of uh, work and jobs, hanging out with friends, uh, making projects and uh, you know, writing and drawing and all that. And I just um, was slowly, uh, thankfully, uh, I was lucky and, and, and uh, healthy enough where that didn't cause other side effects. And I was able to slowly pick up on how useful sleep was. And I remember, um, and this took a long time. So finally in my, um, in sort of my early 30s, I noticed when I was coding on my, my game project at the time and sitting in my, little, my home office and really trying to keep a problem in my head. And I, I was, I was trying to connect a couple of components related to how, um, there was, uh, like an, an, an engine of things where the, the game could trigger onto one on, onto a character and a character could be the player or it could be an NPC. And I'm sitting here cut, connecting these dots and there's some complex ideas as far as in the, I don't know, for me at the time coding, and then I just was typing stuff that didn't make sense. I was typing other things that would come to mind. And, and, and thankfully, I would notice it. Like, you're, you're, you can't just BS your way through a, the, the co code compiling, right? You can't just be like, yeah, you know, do, do some, and then code works. Code doesn't work that way. Code is very literal, very specific. And so I had the specific thing saying, like, essentially, stop this. You're, you are wasting your time, tired fool. And uh, so eventually I listened and I started to slowly incorporate better uh, sleep habits that often on I fast forward till now and I'm like nap king. I'm like, phew, if there's a point in my calendar where I can, where I can make a nap work, uh, it's going to happen. And I am, I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I would go and I would go to a nap concert at this point <laughs> nap and concert. wear the t-shirt. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> with with <laughs> the devil hordes flying, woo! Naps. <laughs> uh, hug this pillow now. <laughs> Off I go. Yeah. Oh, nap concert! I'm grabbing that. All right, all right. That's my did, journal on sleep. And you did that in like about four and a half minutes. Get yeah. out of here! I am not fooling. I am not fooling. Oh man. So, all right. So, like, okay. So, if you don't mind, I'd like to unpack what you did there. Um, this is like what we do in teaching professional development, right? It's like you watch somebody teach and then like you have an observer who's like watching the interactions happen and they're grabbing little moments saying like, okay, I'm going to construct a narrative now of what I think happened and based on things that I saw mm -hmm. in the moment to help you maybe turn around and look at your thing from the outside to see how to understand what you're doing. Um, the first thing you did the moment I said sleep is you immediately constructed a timeline, a narrative timeline by saying then and now, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm going to talk about how I used to engage with sleep and how I engage with sleep now, and let's go back in time and look at how I used to do it. So already you're coming up with um, multiple approaches to the topic right off the bat, right? So it's a big question to say, like, how do you feel about sleep? Well, I feel about sleep this way. I like to take naps, right? Um, well, that's that's one way of doing it. But now you, by setting up a dichotomy, by setting up a then and now, you've already got a argument that you can make to even defend, like, why... Um, 
you do like naps now. Why you're why you're nap king and go to nap concerts? Um, but then also like you in your narrative, you did like the, the the standard thing where like you set you you create an inciting incident, right? Like this is the thing in plot they talk about, like the inciting incident where uh, once upon a time there was so and so, and every day they did such and such until such and such happened, and because of that they did such and such, right? It's that th- that Pixar thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So like you start out like once upon a time I had a flippant premise about sleep it was the first thing to go because i had work to do and i was gonna i was gonna muscle through and then the inciting incident happens one day i was sitting down and i was coding for this game project and code is very literal and it is unforgiving and you even described it as like it was telling me you said i was typing nonsense but you specifically said it was it told me to stop it right because you 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 treated the the, the coding as an outside factor informing you that you were off the rails Right. Mm-hmm. So, you, so because of that, now I am nap king. Right. So, <sighs> so I mean, that, that, it's just it's interesting that like that. that so we are. This show is about visual storytelling, and the people that we uh, speak to, or are trying to serve, or at least. Um, we hope are engaging with this in a positive way. And as a matter of fact, the people who have engaged with this in a positive way are people who have explored visual storytelling. And so when you think about this idea of journaling, um, it's looking back on your past, recent and far past, and asking yourself as a storyteller, like what what patterns do you see and how can you um, use that, 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 that framework to like give you, I mean, not necessarily to like make up a story, but like make sense of your story. This is the way we think, right? Yeah, I mean, we have, uh, we, I mean, we've talked about narrative bias before. There is sort of, uh, I mean, something that that is really important to our cognition is is causality, and you ha- to to be able to frame and recognize at least mo- more than one frame, and in, instead of everything that's happening is stuff, and everything that continues to happen is stuff, there is something that you can focus on, and then follow. And now you can follow, you can create difference, you can create observations, you can discover all sorts of things, patterns, language, or, or symbols, and, and do build complex thoughts because of narrative. Uh, mm-hmm. Narrative is awesome, it's entertaining, and it's, it's a superpower that we have as humans. Yay, humans. <laughs> yay, humans, yay, naps. All right, do you want to pitch one at me, and then I'll try to do one in like four minutes or less, and then we'll take a break? Hmm, Yes. All right, I'm ready. All right, let me pull up the prompts page. What? Which one? Uh, let's see. Tell me about the. Let's see. Tell me about just anything about work in progress. Ah, somehow I knew you're gonna go to that one. I don't know why, but I knew you're gonna do work in progress, and I have no no uh, thoughts queued up on this. So work in progress. Um. What do I think about work in progress? We specifically chose these prompts to be this this uh, abstract, so you can come at it from, from your own uh, perspective. Um, recently, I've been thinking about how there's a lot of different kinds of advice on sharing your work in progress. Um, there's a lot of discussion that's been happening over the years about selling your sawdust, which is to say the stuff, the incidental work that is created to lead up to the finished work is material that you can share in a thoughtful way to help create a larger narrative around your work, uh, advertising for your work, branding for your work, um, uh, and, and, and build interest in the work that you're trying to create. Um, and I, I haven't always been terribly excited about sharing work in progress because I've always thought of the printed book as being the real goal of making comics. The art that leads up to original art, uh, I would often just leave like on the floor of my studio and let the cats just walk on it. And it didn't matter to me because that's not the, that's not the thing that I'm trying to make. That's the thing that leads to the thing I'm trying to make. Um, but in recent years I've learned to, um, value the sharing of the pieces of the thing because I noticed that I'm excited about that kind of thing. Like listening to people talk on DVD commentaries in interviews on panel discussions, listening to people talk about the stumbling blocks and the rough patches and also the uh, incidental discoveries that come along with um, making a thing. Those pieces, those invisible pieces of the journey when they were made visible helped me uh, not only as a fellow creative person, but it, it created a larger story around the thing. Um, so 
I, I enjoy the sharing little tiny pieces of what I'm doing um, for that reason, but also it's a way to get a really nice little um, uh, feedback mechanism, right? Uh, so much of this work requires us to stay in a studio by ourselves for hours and hours on end, which can be very uh you know, lovely if you're an especially introverted person, but there's a lot of a lot of pieces, a lot of um, stages of a project. You really don't you lose all touch with if if it's good at all. And maybe you have a brain trust where you can hold up the piece and go like, hey, is it? Am I on to something here? Is this adding up to something? Uh, is this is this okay? Uh, but sometimes. You know, you don't want to be like going to a group of people and hitting them up for that 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 endorphin rush every day. So you share a little piece. You share a little piece and maybe see how uh, people maybe react to it. And that, that gives you that little boost. Or maybe the act of just sharing it and just letting it be something in the world, even without looking for that, um, you know, that uh, pull of the slot machine, as everybody describes it with social media. Um but then I get to, and this is where I was starting at the beginning of my thought on this, is that there's there's other advice that people say you shouldn't share your work in progress because uh, if you are seeking a publisher, you are diminishing your chances of getting it published because the publisher wants the reveal of the project to be a kind of a debut. I don't know how I feel about that. That feels a little bit, there's a lot of scarcity thinking in that thought that makes me it hits me in in a uh, a fundamental way in a, in an uncomfortable place. It makes me go like, oh, I don't know about that. First of all, because I think you're counting a little bit too much on um, people's memories. <laughs> 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 I think I think when you think that like oh if if somebody sees like so, like the, the Baron von Bear stuff that I've been sharing like that so that when Baron von Bear gets announced as a book if that wonderful thing should happen the people are going to be like oh I already knew about that I already know everything I need to know about that I don't care anymore I think when they see a finished cover with a logo and you know uh, a publisher behind it with some sample pages I think it'll be just as fresh and exciting I don't think that the surprise of the thing counts as much as as that thought suggests. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I mean, I, I haven't talked to every publisher in the entire world. I'm sure it's going to be different from publisher to publisher. But I also, I have a natural um, re recoiling from advice that is shouted uh, uh, on online as, whatever you do, don't do X. I mean, outside of some like common sense ideas, like don't be a jerk, don't yell at people, don't be mean, and don't denigrate other people, which is I think should be like that's a, we, I shouldn't have to shout that at you. Uh, unfortunately, some people do need to have that like slap on the wrist every once in a while because the people forget themselves. But, um, but yeah, I I I think that part of my reaction to that advice is based on that too. So I haven't quite sorted out whether or not I think that this advice has any value. I think that I need to do some touching base with people that I know in the publishing industry. Uh, and then I also have to get in touch with how my feelings are about somebody sort of yelling at me anonymously, don't do this. <laughs> so, so that's where I stand in work in progress right now. It's something I enjoy uh, sharing while it's happening. And it's something that I know that I'm doing because I want to get a little bit of feedback from, from the crowd. Um, and uh, but I also hope that when I'm sharing my my stuff that is working and isn't working, um, that I'm also helping to diffuse this 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 uh, false idea that creativity comes fully formed from the minds of geniuses, and it isn't something that isn't labored over and sweat over and, and chipped at and whittled at and worried and licked and gnawed at for for years and years. So there, how'd I do? <laughs> Fantastic. Seems like you've done this before. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very fascinating how, um, yeah, your, your whole flow to this uh, had some, had some similarity. And I think there, that, that one, there's probably a, like a second prompt, uh, like prompt plus approach, right? Mm. Because like you described my approach in that, I, that I used to handle it. And, and honestly, that's very repeatable. Like when, and I think you have a similar, a similar pattern, but not with, uh, with timeline. It was more about um, relationships and signals of, of uh, points of view, almost like a dialogue among different points of view is how mm. you explored it. And like, so you ask, you started out by, you asked yourself the prompt, which was almost like starting your engine. 
you right? Yeah, yeah. And, what do I think and, about this? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And then you were like, now I'm going. And yeah. you um you you start out with observations of saying like, well, how does this prompt fit with the world around me? Um, what were people what are people saying about work in progress? How do now uh, so there's uh, that world outside, then there's a world inside. How do I feel about work in progress? And mm. um then that that led to a couple of perspectives in in your own dialogues, multiple dialogues, not just one point of view that you're holding on to, that there's um there's sort of um maybe uh, a little bit of influence from like far past of having a little bit of conflict of saying like, well, yeah, that's, that's not the final thing. The final thing is what we celebrate, what matters. It's like you started out there in sort of agreement in sort of past jerseys, like, yeah, you know, the, you know, what they're saying about uh, super secret sauce and then surprise the world with a debut. Mm-hmm. Uh, younger jerseys is, is, uh, is an agreement, but then you, you went off uh, toward the other direction and was essentially describing how it's, there's so much benefit to it. And even how, and then you, you even asked, you seem, you implicitly asked yourself, like, how else can I arrive at this benefit? And you talked about brain trust and whatnot. So it's like you were arguing perspective all the way through. So, yeah. and, and saying, like, well, but then again, so the well, brain trust could get you this, you know, this benefit of sharing without essentially, you know, hurting a, a future debut opportunity. But then, um, but then again, you're, you're not really putting that debut opportunity in danger because what is that really? Let's dig, you know, let's, let's, let's understand that more. So what is that really arguing points back and forth? Um, but not chaotically. And it's just more of a dialogue with, yeah. with your, you know, with the topic and, uh, and then where you landed, you, you had a couple of, um, uh, like conclusion, uh, emphasis as far as the the things you carry with you about the point. So mm-hmm. there's because um, uh, you took apart the narrative a couple times, and it's almost like the bad guy was getting up, right? And you're like, <laughs> I'm taking you apart one more time, and everyone's like, okay, narratives that that bad guy's gone for sure now, no longer <laughs> worried. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Then you did like sort of actions and what's next and like sort of the whole like extending this topic. This doesn't exist right now. This whole thought experiment on this isn't the conclusion for for eternity, right? So you hint at that too by saying ways that you would keep, you would think further on this and, and gain new observations as you continue to try the, yeah. the sharing. Um, yeah. So that was a, that dialogue of it's, it's somewhere it's like you're, you're, walking along and imagining who else may have something to say about it and who else is like your different perspectives that you've seen and yeah. you're to chat with at the point at that point yeah and and i'm a big fan of action items at the ends of meetings right like what are we going to do now we met what are we going to do about it so i like to give myself action items at the ends of my essays if i can right is like think about okay well i thought about this for a little while now what am i going to do with that well i guess i have this to do yet Here's something I'm going to think about more. This is a thing that I'm going to follow up on. Um, and 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 I think that that, for me, is a way of reemphasizing to myself and hopefully the audience who's pay, pay, uh, along for the ride, is that this isn't done. We're never done with this stuff, and we shouldn't feel done with this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I think... You know, again, a very useful pattern, a useful approach is uh, framing as dialogue among different points of view. Yeah. To me, showing that you're trying to be, you know, considerate in discovering more about this, this thing that, that has arrived in, in, into this conversation. It, it, all the, all the participants are in your head. <laughs> Which is. Yes, it has utility, but it also can be crippling sometimes. Like, so yet, just the other day was election day. <laughs> and I was re- reading about all the candidates for city council. You know, I'm like, well, I see what they're thinking about. They have a good point there. Oh, but this guy has a good point too. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Considering uh, every perspective sometimes can be absolutely uh, stymieing. So uh. that's true. Um, <laughs> right. It makes it, it's tough to, makes it tough to vote. It makes it tough to uh where to get lunch 
uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so you want to take a break? Thank you for that, yeah. Rob. That was that was that was a good workout. Um, Thank you. Fun idea, Jersey. <laughs> um. All right. So in about a minute and a half, we're going to come back and talk about some of the other contributions other leaners have been making to the Art Sound Off Challenge and think about different other, you know, a much broader uh, look at different approaches to this this challenge and celebrate some of the people who've been playing along. But before we do that, we have to thank some people who make this show possible. And those people happen to be the folks who support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Lean Into Art is the website. What is it? Well... It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in Rob and Jersey and what we do, and you want to help make the show more sustainable, you can contribute as little as a dollar a month to help make that possible, help help bring us to sustainability. And I want to thank five people who have been doing exactly that. First up, Mike White. Thank you, Mike, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Mike on Instagram at Mike White Robot. Also, thank you to Rachel Ross, one of the people who have been participating in the Art Sound Off this year. Thank you, Rachel, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Rachel on Twitter at NYC Terrace. And JS Taskus. Thank you, JS. It means a lot to us. You can find JS on Twitter at JS Taskus. And Sophie Lawson. Thank you, Sophie. You can find Sophie on Twitter at Sophie Lawson Art. And finally, Jesse Kaufman. Thank you, Jesse, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Jesse on Twitter at Jesse Kaufman, K-A-U-F-F-M-A-N. And you can join them at patreon.com slash lean into art, where you will find all the shows we make, including the extra leans, the shows we record only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want in a safe place with fellow leaners. Patreon.com slash lean into art is the website. Thank you so much to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot to us. Mm-hmm really does. It's awesome to get that signal. Okay. Uh, how about... Yeah, that's how good I feel about, about this art challenge. <laughs> and about the folks who support us on Patreon. So, um, All right. Want to celebrate some people? I do. I do. Um... Gosh, so yeah, you've you've got a you've got a good list here, and I have to say, um, I've I've only dabbled a little bit into uh, others' posts to this point, so I've been looking forward to chatting more about it uh, here. Yeah, I, I was I was thinking about this, like, you know, heaven help us if this thing ever actually exploded to like Inktober levels, we would never it, it, would, it would it's completely slip out of our fingers like sand, right? Like we wouldn't be able to keep up with anything. I mean, it's I think one of the things that about it being a fairly small event makes it easier to stay in touch with everybody who's participating and having a sense of like what dialogue is happening in this. So that, that, that part is actually really nice. Um, so let's see, we've got, um, I want to, I want to pronounce this right. So it's, uh, oh my goodness. How do I say, how do I say their name? It is Sinia. Sinia Shi, thank you. Yes, yeah, Sinia Shi has been posting a couple different posts uh, uh, on Anchor. So let's see how you spell it. I want to get it up on the screen so we can look at it. Um, so it's uh, anchor.fm, S-Y-N-I-A-S-I-D-H-E. Um, so five episodes so far. Did a really nice episode on community, actually. Um I don't know if you had a chance to listen to this one yet, Rob, but um, yeah, I know there's 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 just enough that like it's kind of like I've had to do a sampling myself. But um, Sinia was saying like like did the did a similar kind of construction of an essay in that they said uh, like when I think of the word community, I think of like personal community and online community, right? And they said like your online community should only be one should only be one node in, of in your rings and networks of community, right? Exploring how yeah it has a value, and but there are things that online communities can't do that personal communities can do, and let's look at both. So it was a it was a pretty thoughtful, uh, very short. I mean, I think uh, Sinia did a uh, better job than we did of exploring these ideas succinctly. I think it was like what two minutes thirty nine seconds. Did hear Sinia's? <laughs> okay, I'm trying to remember which post I did hear. Now that I see this anchor, uh, yes, which one did I listen to? I think I listened to the notebooks post. Okay. Yeah, Sinia. Okay. Yes, but not the community one yet. 
but uh, they they exp- explored community from like well i mean the subtitles are right there it's like talking about basic human needs right mm-hmm. this idea of like let's look at it from a broad perspective and like how do i think that this word connects to us as human beings um so we will link to these in the show notes as well and you can find them by going to the art sound off hashtag on any social media um but yeah uh Sinia also did one on yeah, on, on, on Notebooks, which was pretty good, too. I listened to that one as well. Um, anyone anyone's that were uh, jumping out at you that you wanted to talk about, or do you want me to just keep running through my list? Yeah, let's go through the list. Okay. Um, so another one that I really... Well, I was, gl- I was grateful to see Rachel Ross was here um, with an episode on art supplies. Let me pull that up on screen. So it, this is at Grocket Science on Anchor. Um, so yeah, uh, Rachel, Rachel is, is doing a similar thing to what I'm doing this year, but like using this as an opportunity to test drive the idea of a new podcast thing. Uh, and so Rachel's is called Grocket Science, which is all one word, G-R-O-K-I-T science at anchor.fm. Um, and and also did an episode recently called uh, "Won't Magically Happen," and it's it's another it's a really short rumination. It's only like one minute forty six seconds. Um, once again, I'm really impressed with how some of these people are like keeping it brief. Wow, so concise, uh, super that concise, is yeah. stunning. Um, and it was just a simple. It's a very simple thought, and it was just a, like a good reminder to me is like won't magically happen. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> It, if you if you have a thing you want to do, capture it for God's sakes. Capture it, or it's not. It it, just, it won't magically happen. It will disappear from your brain. Um, and yeah, as as somebody who is a big fan of the ETP, like every morning, as Ann and I are talking about our days, as she's getting ready for work, I will repeatedly run to my ETP, going capturing that. Capture. Give me a second. I got to capture that. Otherwise, it's not going to happen today. So, um, yeah. Um, so, and it's just, uh, how do I put it? It's also just, it's so fascinating to hear other people's voices. I think that's one of the things that I get a lot out of this event is, um, I remember ages ago when I first met Brandon Dayton, who's been on the show a couple of times now. And, uh, this is when I was doing the art and story podcast and Brandon and I had been interacting on Twitter for probably a good, like six to eight months talking a lot about the topics we covered in the show. And, I didn't realize that I was putting together a mental picture of what this guy was like um, based on the way he was engaging with me through text, right? And then so when I finally met him face to face, like, oh, you know, like I was, I was really caught, like caught off guard. I'm like, I, whoa, I, I don't, this is not what I expected at all. And Brandon was like, well, what did you expect? <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's like, and it's one of those things where I, I, my 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 teaching Jedi Master Mary Jo once said this about us that like when we're we're in a, watching a movie and we're like uh, based on a book and we're like that's not the actor who should have played that character and they'll say well who should have like I don't know but not that guy and it, this this points to this idea that we have a mental picture in our head of characters when we're reading about them that maybe we don't even like visually see like we don't consciously see what that picture is but it's there a visualization is happening when we're reading and I think a visualization is happening when we're engaging with people in text. So I don't know what I was expecting Brandon to be, but I know I was surprised by what I met. And so the, hearing this, the voices of these people provides that extra context and helps inform a more nuanced and realistic picture of who we're engaging with when we're engaging with people online. So I would submit, I don't, I don't know if, how well we can test this idea, but I would submit that doing this kind of journaling and sharing it does promote empathy, I would think. But... Uh, I would, I would imagine so. That's, uh, hmm. It's, I mean, there's a little bit of a chicken and egg if you think about um, you're sharing and someone needs to then listen, right? And then tune somehow tune in. True. So True. they're fairly ripe, you know, they're like you have uh, an audio, a group handing out uh, thoughts and reflection. Then you've got a group harvesting thoughts and reflection, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of empathy um, that uh, I think maybe it's an empath. I don't mean to be. I, I'm do. I am who I am. So I think it's sort of the. It's the. 
connection of uh, more, there's more meeting of empathy and perspective. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a better way of saying it. Because yes, I've had I've had my share of unempathetic interactions with people based on the audio stuff that I've shared in the past. I don't want to suggest that it's an automatic recipe to generate empathy, but yes, it it increases the odds for meeting people who are empathetic cuz in order to show up and listen carefully, you have to have it. It's the yeah, the meetings. That that's that's I think what what's helping. And <clears throat> and with and that meeting carries with it um just it will pop your bubble of assumption. So yeah, that's, you know, you're popping gonna... assumption bubbles since 2009 or 2000. <laughs> what was the first year we started this? 2011, 2012. <laughs> sure. I think 2011. Yes. Okay. Um, we have a newcomer this year, somebody who hasn't participated in the past and that's uh, Hiroshi paradox, which you can find on anchor.fm slash Hiroshi paradox. And, he did something interesting uh, with the day four prompt, which was, uh, what are you playing? And he starts off by saying, like, look, I tried, I, I did a first draft of this. I didn't like what I came up with, so I'm going to take it and run in a different direction. And so he, he told the story of uh, reminiscing on art class when he was a child because he was doing a video game inspired project. He was making a collage map of, I think it was Super Mario World 2's world map uh, from the Game Boy, uh, and so which let so he start used that that video game playing a video game prompt to lead him through this exploration of well why do I miss art class so much and then he leads him into thinking more about well maybe I I should find more social events where people just draw together but drink and draws don't really feel like they fit me so I wonder what that would look like and it's just him thinking aloud about like the social component to art and what he's looking for he's he's sorting he's thinking aloud about what he's looking for by examining what exists and what what qualities of the things that exist fit and which don't um so I thought that was that was some some really interesting and good thought experiment uh, experimenting happening on his uh, anchor channel. That's really cool. I think it, it would be neat to learn more too somehow as far as the process of, of doing the journaling and, uh, and just hear from folks who are, who are doing it. And is it affecting uh, their projects? Is it affecting how they, they look at that, the, at their day? Mm. And It'd be neat to learn more about it where I think implicitly, I mean, and explicitly others have sort of shared experiences here and there, but, um, but it'd be, it just be, it'd be neat to have a fresh, fresh look at how is this affecting, um, you know, uh, expected or unexpected outcomes for you know now now that you're doing it, you participated. What happened? What would what um, would that what would that information gathering look like? I don't know, like because I don't want to do a survey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. But but it could be just tweets, posts, something. Could be just well, react in any way you want to react, but then share it. Well, again, thinking out loud, we're we're eight episodes. Yeah. Well, I, I just as I'm, I'm spitballing here, and maybe this isn't the right place to do this kind of spitballing, but we're eight episodes away from episode three hundred. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if that there's something to be done around that time of like a a, a post art sound off check in, like you know, two months from now. After like a, a a good month after the challenge is over, like at the start of the new year, like what did anything change after doing this journaling about? Uh, and work? it could be a call for this is it. Yeah, so that, that that's intriguing. Adding to the to the spitballing you, but um, it's um so post art sound off for all art sound offs. Mm -hmm. Um, what 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 did you have you what kind of things have come of it? And uh, mm -hmm. because that thinking out loud that you you were describing of of Hiroshi's was, um, I mean, it's a certain kind of brave journaling thing where you're getting ideas out, and you now you captured them, you put them, you put it into audio form, which I think has some it has some benefit. I think writing it down has like another level of benefit, if in any case something that you can refer to, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I, I I I see possibilities. I'm in here. I could share thoughts that would be very much leading and, you know, my narrative about that kind of thing, but uh, I don't want to do that yet. Okay. <laughs> 
but yes, let, let's 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 plant that little flag and see what people say about it. Um, and we can follow up on the in the Lean Into Art Discord about it too to see how people feel about maybe doing some kind of reflection after the fact to see get some information, get some data on how this how people are engaging with this and how how it's yeah, affecting. How has them. reflection helped you? Like what yeah. what what came of it? What yep. has come of your reflection? Yep. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another uh, another leaner who has been participating is uh, Shadowing Tronics Troy, uh, who has interacted with the show a, a variety of, of occasions uh, and has participated in multiple art sound offs. Is doing it once again through his YouTube channel, which is BW Media Spotlight, um, and I will link to it in the show notes. But uh, he did he did an interesting thing j recently where he actually did an entry which was a reaction to two of my entries. So that's happening again. Um, so I did. So for mine, we talked about this before, but like briefly, uh, I'm doing uh, little journal entries on thirty different characters from the Transformers franchise. And looking at them, how I felt about them as a child, how I feel about them as an adult, looking at what the writers were doing, what the designers were doing, and seeing how that influenced my art. Like evaluating why these characters mean something to me and looking at how they influence my art. Well, two entries I did were Rodimus Prime and Optimus Prime. And I sort of, uh, I, I made no secret out of like my biases toward Rodimus because Rodimus is the young hero who's learning how to be a hero. And I think that's an interesting story to tell as opposed to Optimus, who I, I think the language I used was like, he, he sits with you like a warm meal or like a, like a very old, comfortable hoodie. It's like, you're glad it's there, but it doesn't scream dynamism and, and like excitement to you, right? He's like this very warm, fatherly figure in the series. Mm. And which could come across like as me saying- mashed potatoes, I don't know. Which I love, love mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes with, with sour cream and butter on it, it's the best. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it, which could sound like I'm saying he's boring, right? And so as a Troy took up the, the, the mantle or took up the, the the case and said like, hey, look, here's why he's not boring. And I'm like, yep, yep. He, he, he did a marvelous job of explaining the aspirational character and what they represent in storytelling in his entry. And I agreed with 100%. And I'm like, yep, that's exactly why I love Superman. And I always make the case why Superman is more interesting to me than any other DC hero for uh, for that reason, that he points to sort of like a standard to a, to, to achieve, right? Um, and I think I forgot about that with Optimus. And I don't think I really touched on that in my essay. So I was grateful for Troy for like calling me out on it and uh, like bringing more layers of discussion to it and more knowledge of discussion because like he he knows more about like the intricacies of the Transformers timelines than i do so it's fascinating to find out that like oh i didn't know that the, the kids series rescue bots is tied into transformers prime uh, that's fascinating to me i'll have to look more into that so yeah um so there's another one another series to check out uh another one is old friend of the show becca hilburn um Natto Soup on uh, YouTube, and Becca has been doing uh, some vlogs for Art Sound Off with just the YouTube phone app, just like pointing her phone at the screen or at her in her studio and doing essays. So, got an entry on on community, got an entry on uh, favorite tools, challenges. Hey, it looks like Joseph's in that one. Mm -hmm. So, I'm noticing that. I am. I'm super embarrassed. I wasn't subscribed to Becca's channel. Everyone should su should subscribe to Becca's channel on YouTube. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Uh, so Nata Soup is the the channel to subscribe to, and yeah, she's she's been doing some uh, really cool uh, cool essays where you just get to see her in her studio thinking a lot about these ideas, and her cat will show up from time time to time and pop into the screen. So, um, so is that every? Oh. One more we got to call out to because I was grateful to see this person return, and that is Leonard Angelo. Leonard Angelo is back, Rob. That's awesome. For Art Sound Off 2019, I just listened to his entry on challenges, <laughs> and Leonard is such a delight to listen to because he's it, every time every prompt he's like, "I have a complicated relationship with this." <laughs> Or is it, is, is, it, is it complicated to use another word for it? But basically, he's describing his complicated relationship with all these topics. And Leonard 
brings a lovely counterpoint to our perspective. Like he he clearly appreciates our perspective and our approach to things by like saying like here's a bunch of prompts if you want them. We're going to do our own thing because we don't like to be hemmed in anyway. <laughs> we want to encourage everybody else to not feel hemmed in. Um but like Leonard's like, yeah, well some of us like to have, you know, rules and uh, uh parameters to operate within. Um and as somebody who's married to a woman who works in libraries and museums, I totally get that perspective. I live with that perspective. It's like, give me some some constraints to be creative within, right? Um, so yeah, I, I was grateful that, that Leonard like basically basically high fived us for our approach, but then said, "But I'm gl I'm glad that you gave me prompts because I need this." Um, and so yeah, the the episode on challenges, he kind of he he explores like a, a full timeline of like the first creative challenge he encountered when he first encountered Inktober ages ago, and um, exploring some of the 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 dyna the dynamics of such a challenge when it explodes to the level of Inktober, and the pros and cons of that. Like you know, it's a good thing because a lot of people are playing along. It's a bad thing because like all sorts of different you know tensions arise when you get that many people are uh, sort of playing along with it um and one thing he said that i thought was an interesting observation um which i hadn't considered and i wonder if you want to react to this is that he he specifically notes that art sound off tends to be less about self-promotion than it is about sharing um and i don't know if this is a chicken or egg thing right um but you know it's like there there is a little bit of um that i can see how and, and I, I myself, when I'm participating in Inktober, I'm using the hashtag because I want my stuff to get noticed, right? Um, and these, and I think there's, I want to say there's a, an element of that with my art sound offs this year. I hope like Transformers fans discover my journal entries because I'm doing a Transformers podcast soon. But, but largely, I feel like he's noticing something that I think is baked into the DNA of this thing that comes from our perspective. I don't know. I wonder if you could react to that a little bit. I think there's a bit of, um, so our voice finding a audience that, you know, so we, we have our overlap. Our audience has um, their connection to, to what we're sharing. And there's a lot of common ground where, uh, we do emphasize being service minded of you know and and then we care about being expressive but we're we're kind of like um we're always sort of you know helping our expressiveness get to where it needs to go on time as a as this thoughtful uh g p s of of art process and you know uh su supporting disciplines and stuff and I think we find that with our community so that we, like we all have this emphasis on not all of us. No, we're not all the same. We're all different, all sorts of backgrounds, what have you. But still, like that sort of behavior trait isn't uncommon among us all. And I think as a side effect, it's like the 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 emphasis toward creating and serving then can be in conflict with promotion. I think there's two, there's at least a couple layers of that. That strikes me as well, as well. So the promotion can um be left aside by as a um uh, to the detriment of us all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And honestly, finding a, so saying like holistically addressing your, your, your art and your practice, it does need to involve that service mindedness, mindedness that you use to channel your purpose and your passion and get, get the skills and make the stuff and, and serve your audience. It also helps with, um, you know, speaking your voice in ways that help spread your voice and, and helps increase your audience. I mean, that's important too. They, I, I don't see those as two separate things anymore. Just that like one is easier to, to focus on. So mm -hmm. there's that. And I've totally been adding um, promotion along the way, this, mm -hmm. this art zone off. And, uh, and to a greater, to a, a, um, a greater extent, because, because I'm trying to practice that, uh, that service minded approach. Like what is my voice when it comes to spreading the word about what I do? I want to get better at that. What I'm hearing in what you're saying is you're taking what Leonard said and then massaging it gently into, it's not that it's one or the other, it's that they're integrated more holistically, right? They're very integrated. And, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because I think about when I was doing my little uh, thing at the, the top end of the show about work in progress, and I was really ex exploring how like sharing work in progress can be helpful to other people to show to like demonstrate that art is more complex than just a fully formed thing. And at the same time, it becomes this breadcrumb trail that I leave saying, hey, I make things, I make things, I make things, I make things. Here's the thing I make, right? Uh, so, but that the, 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 there's a difference between that and then like the automated bot tweet that says, hey, we like what you do. We'd like you to check out our stuff too, you know? Um, there's a couple of bots that show up once in a while on the Art Sound Off hashtag now and then. Yeah. I think they're yeah. lost. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the uh, the other thing is, so that's the, uh, that, that trait you're describing. So the, the, um, the practice of business and some folks philosophy re relating to it, um, they have their own service mindedness, but that also comes at the desire to, um, I don't know, increase the, the spread of their business and the growth of their business really focused on that growth and the willingness to look at um, relationships a little more transactionally. And that's, I don't, I don't mean to say that in a way of like, and that's why they are, that's why they suck. No. Um, I, I see, I see that as a different kind of creative uh, fluency and trait. Uh, it's just that they're, they're really focusing on the, the, the business trade mechanism. And so um, one of the things that you need to do that uh, or you, you need is to reach a lot of eyeballs to like somehow convert some percent and they're valuing that more than other parts of the process. And honestly, sometimes if you're on a, if you're on a project and you have someone who's really good at that and has the, a little, the, they have nice service mindedness somehow intermixed in there, they can be awesome to have on your team. Yeah. But um, when they show up, well, Inktober has become a mass, um, a fairly massive audience. And so there you go. There's the, so now you have the congregation of enough eyeballs and time and attention where it's a target for people looking to transactionally convert folks mm -hmm. uh, eyeballs into something right mm -hmm. so you know the mixed bag i mean it's it's the difference between going to uh i suppose a um a metallica concert in 1982 versus a metallica concert in 1992 and 2002 yeah. and right so well, 1992 uh, is a good year to pick because that was the, the the year that that uh, Enter Sandman came out, and I remember I remember the discussions around that album. Uh, I forget that was it the Black Album? Is that what was it called? Yeah, yeah. We have a the the success the, their success as an artist. I mean, they're just reaching like giant venues now, and, and it's like that feels different. You're hanging mm -hmm. out in an art challenge in a giant venue, in a way mm -hmm. when you're October. Yeah, but then again, there's a lot of offshoots. So there's not just Inktober. There was like I dabbled a little bit with Viztober, mm. right? And yeah. that's a that's a small crowd, smallish. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, and it, it, going back to one of Hiroshi's art sound offs about like going to like like social events where people are just drawing. There, there is something about that about like just being in a small group of people and getting that immediate feedback from people all participating and, and the, the kind of immediate cross pollination of ideas that can happen when something's a little bit smaller feels different. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. A lot of threads to pull on here. Like yeah. honestly, yeah. this is a whole tangled ball of that, that anyone can start out art sound off journaling to their heart's content. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Do we do we have something, some final thought that we could pull out of that? Hmm. Sure. Of course we do. Of course we do. That's what we do. Because uh, I feel like we're coming up on it. We're coming up on uh, final thought uh, kind of territory. Um, so, okay. Well, how about in about a minute and a half to two minutes, we'll come back with final thought and wrap up this this podcast. But before we do that, we got to thank some more people who make this show possible. Um, those people happen to be us. We make stuff and we bring these thoughts to the, the thoughts that occur to us while we're making things we bring to the show to turn into the show that we make. And the thing that I make that I hope you'll check out is Boulder and Fleet Adventures for Hire, which is now in print. Uh, it's a book called Mining for Trouble. It's a 92 page graphic novel, full color, about two best friends, a bear and a bird, who go on adventures together. 
and uh, the tension between our two heroes. They're best friends. They love each other very much. But the bird is very ambitious. She wants to be the most famous. Uh, she wa she wants more transactions to happen in her business. And Boulder's worried about some more of the uh, on the ground interactions between people. Uh, he he believes in uh, relationship building and uh, coalition building, and maybe just maybe being famous uh, is is less important than uh, actually helping people on the ground. And that is it. so. Brandon Dayton once said about the series, like this is just a giant metaphor for freelancing, isn't it? I'm like, yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> Uh, so it's it's at uh, books.jdros.com is where you can find it. You can get it in print uh, for around sixteen dollars, or you can also get it for a digital download. Uh, it also you'll get it for digital download by signing up for my Patreon, Patreon.com/jersey. Uh, Rob, you help people. Yeah, I've got a I've got a few things to do. I, one of um, one of those things is uh, is is one on one coaching, and it's it's uh, it's well, if, let's say you're navigating some career choices, navigating some creative project choices and challenges, and it could be an event or it could be sort of a season thing where you've got a series of, of things to navigate and it would be really helpful for you to have someone to um, just helpfully listen and sort of be your, your sort of brain trust in a way on navigating uh, where you're what you're building next, where are you stuck? How are you trying to get unstuck and all that? What thing is keeping you up at night about your creative projects? And this is the kind of thing that haunts every one of us who are making businesses and creating things and all that. And every one of us sort of can sort of let events come to pass and go with the flow. That's That works, right? You can also, um, uh, you know, find some time now and then to dig in and, and do some planning, but then Maybe it's hard to keep going, but having a coach, you get this feedback loop and this, this sort of uh, whatever flavor of accountability works for you and um, a, a thinking partner as well. So it's not here. Uh, you know, I'm not here as a coach to say, I've got the answers to everything you have, but I do have a process and skills to help you navigate whatever you're working on. And that's where uh, you can try it out if you're like, oh, interesting. Um but I don't want to jump in right away. Yeah, you can just try it out for free. There's a, a sign up for like a half hour uh, discovery session where we can talk about coaching and, and you can give it a try. So go to robcoach.me and uh, schedule your appointment. We did an episode a few episodes back where Rob actually coached me on the show. Uh, it was at actually it was at the top of October when I was struggling with my 31 day uh, uh creative pitch challenge where I was trying to build a pitch in 31 days. And I was at this point where I was really feeling like, I don't know why, but this thing is starting to feel a little bit too big. And I'm starting to feel like I'm afraid I'm going to run out of steam. And all you did, Rob, was like, it was almost like I had like this wobbling Jenga tower and you like, you pushed on one block and then to make it wobble a little bit more. And then I was like, oh wait, I got to move these three blocks. And then all of a sudden like, oh, the tower is stable again. And I'm feeling like excited about this again. Um, it really felt like it was like the gentlest nudges to get me to think harder in, in, in different uh, domains that I wasn't thinking before. And suddenly I was really excited about the project again. So I'm telling you that, um, you know, robcoach.me worked for me. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And we <laughs> practiced it in public. So this yeah. isn't guru baloney weird stuff. I mean, it's, it's um, like, like again, or, or, or some kind of, kind of magical authoritative, you know, pile of answers. That's not it at all. It's, it's more about thoughtful questions and exploration and yeah. so, yeah, that's, uh, so I forget what episode that was. It was a couple back. And, it was uh, a couple back. I'll put it in the show notes so people can actually try it uh, to, to see what it looks like. Cause it was, it was, it was good. It was, it was really, really useful. And it was just you asking me like really thoughtful questions, um, and, and, and reacting to what feedback I was giving you. So yeah, it, it wasn't, it was not at all prescriptive. Uh, it was very thoughtful and, and, um, yeah, I, I, I highly recommend it, robcoach.me. So um, the other thing we hope you'll check out is the Lena Tuart Discord, which we will link to in the show notes. We'll put the invitation link in there. And uh, what is it? It's, it's Lena Tuart has a forum now. We have a Discord server where you can engage with us uh, between shows. There are uh, three public channels. There's the topic request channel where you can say like, hey, this is the thing I'm struggling with. Maybe you guys could talk about that. Comments where you can comment on past episodes. And then the challenges quest channel where you can share things that you're working on, especially during creative challenge month. 
for us to react to. And then there's three Patreon channels, only for people who support us on Patreon, where there's Castle Level Up, where you can share works in progress, the things like we just had somebody sharing some work on uh, a cover that they're working on for a book. Like, hey, give me some feedback on this thing. And, you know, it's like a brain trust room. And then Gentle Town is where it's okay to ask for a high five. Hey, I did a thing. I would love to get some feedback on it. That what I was talking about earlier with works in progress. And then finally, a social channel where, you know, it's literally just where you can socialize. Um, so it's it's free to join, and uh, there is a mobile app, so it's super easy to interact with uh, with Discord. And then there's a special there's special perks for people who support us on Patreon. We support or we thank everybody who has been supporting us and interacting with us in the uh, the Discord. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. So it's a it's a low pressure uh, social space. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fun to have that again. <laughs> It's really fun to have like low pressure social space. It feels like there's a lot of pressure everywhere else. So, um, cool. All right. Do we have a final thought to chew on as we close out? Uh, yeah, I think there's, uh, this, this whole, uh, growth marketing thing that we were, we're poking at a little bit mm -hmm. as, a, as a topic. Yeah. Um, I can it's, I, can it's, I, it's, I do you, do you feel like there's like an episode in that topic? For sure. Okay. For sure. <laughs> okay, good. And I think in a way, this is like prototyping for an episode on the topic. Okay. Uh, so I would be curious, some some questions that, that you have or uh, like pain points mm. about marketing <sighs> for growth. Yeah, I mean, it's... <sighs> I have, I know that my bias historically has been to be too darn Taoist about this stuff. It's like, if I just do a good job and if I just show up and do the best job I possibly can um, and make people's lives better to, to the best of my ability, that more opportunities will open themselves up. But if I stand around to do this and shake both fists over my shoulders and say, like, don't forget, jdrus.com, everybody. Um, if, I, if, if I do that, I'm somehow diminishing the value that I brought to that room, Right. Now, on the other hand, I was just at the Buckeye Book Festival or Buc Buckeye Book Fair in Worcester, Ohio last weekend, and I did a presentation for 50 seventh graders on how comics work. And at the end of the talk, shame on me, uh, I didn't have a slide up with my contact information or any information about me, who, who I am and what I do, right? Okay. So I'm just like... And I clap my hands. I'm like, okay, well, I want to honor your time. I want to make sure that I don't cut into your lunch at all. So does anybody have any last minute thoughts, questions, or wonderings? I could take one or two and then I got to go. One kid raises his hand. I'm like, yes. And he's like, where can I find you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, it's like, he just hit me with an uppercut, right? It's like, uppercut, you are not providing the full value because we want to follow up with you afterwards. Even though we were a bunch of seventh graders all sitting here with our arms crossed, you reached us, you touched us today, and we want to make we want to keep that connection active. We want to know where else we can continue this this conversation with you. So um yeah, but I think I have a natural natural, that's not natural. It is a um I've developed an aversion to to doing that because I've seen instances that made me so uncomfortable that I do the I don't want to be that guy. And I don't think that that's a healthy perspective. I don't think it's I think it's 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 useful information, but it's not a healthy perspective to keep of just constantly be like magnetically being repelled by not that guys over and over again because I don't think it's fully examining what it is about the not that guy, right? Like I, I haven't fully examined what it is about that guy that's repelling me, right? Maybe there's something else about that guy besides the fact that he's slipping me his, his business card, you know? Right. There could be things that are effective that are happening that are getting lost in the signal of distaste. Yep. And then uh, it feels pretty justified to walk away from that kind of event and feel like, aren't I smart because I don't do that or whatever. But then what do you do? Because you need that. It's like saying, I don't, um, re I like, so it's like saying you hold your breath forever. I mean, you have to breathe. Um, you're in business, so you have yeah. to market. So, right. 
how are you doing that? And so just telling some, telling like, that's what I heard in your description that really hit me where it's like uh, going further beyond the distaste and saying, well, but how are you do, meeting that need? And, and mm -hmm. uh, because how, what you are doing is something that you can put on your list. It's something that you can make happen and versus the, what you're not doing, what you're not doing is done because you're not doing it. Yeah. So interesting. I like that that uh, the the not that guy is this interesting trap in a few levels it it really is it really is and I, I i think it i can name a bunch of instances in my life where i've missed out on opportunities because i was so instead of being in the moment and present and just being my authentic true self i mean i know that's kind of like a buzz phrase right now but i i, I think there's like a lot of value to thinking about this like like your 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 true I don't want to say uninhibited, but like your relaxed, honest self in, in these situations. I was at an event with Dan Michigan years ago, and he was going around and talking to all these people that he's known for years in the in the comics industry. A lot of people who to whom I looked up, I, I really looked up to these people. Like, oh, the, 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 really that inker? You know, I, I grew up on that person's inking, and like I really love how they do this kind of special kind of like swooshy line or whatever. And Dan's like, oh yeah, I've known him for years. You should meet him. Well, at one point he was talking to a couple of people and I wasn't like immediately like acknowledged in the moment. And I thought, Ooh, they're, they're catching up. They're catching up on old times. They're old friends. I don't want to be that guy who inserts himself into this conversation because I want to meet this person. So I just like slowly edged away. And then Dan t came, found me later. And he's like, where did you go? I'm like, yeah, you know, it's like you were catching up with an old friend and I didn't want to be that guy. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about because like you're my friend, they're my friend and I wanted to introduce my friends together. And like you took that opportunity away because of whatever that, that guy is that you're talking about, you know? <laughs> well, now I feel like a different, that guy. <laughs> Darn it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's like, I think, I think I put a lot of, um, I give that, I give that, that, that character in my head, a lot of power and I, and I think it stops me from fully examining what it is about a moment that I don't like. And also, I mean, it comes back to this idea of like disliking the behavior and not, and, and not the person who's actually doing the behavior, right? It's like it's dehumanizing people to say that guy. And I think that's something else that I personally need to work on. Um, it, it's, it's, it's had its utility in the past to help be like a guiding force and help me make you know decisions that I feel good about. But I think it's also been blinding me to things that I could be you know, doing better with my business. It's an, it's an incomplete approach to making a decision. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's, uh, and I've done it as well. So that's where I've, I was like, yeah, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. I think this can be a, a pretty big topic, but even, even that alone saying, you know, go, go past that point of finding your, finding your, your negative example and then saying like, wait, fine. What's your positive example? What will you do? What do yeah. you want to do? And and also to give a teaser for that episode, this this ties into this whole Jungian idea of the shadow. The shadow as being like the psychological principle that like you will never allow yourself to be, and that like part of this part of this idea of being like a fully developed human being is integrating your shadow and accepting that as part of you. And like it's this whole idea of like you can't be peaceful unless you actually have the power to commit violence. That kind of thing is like otherwise you're just harmless. That that I, now we're getting into like some weird territories, but but this idea of like accepting the fact that there's like dark there's 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 pieces of your per, your psychological persona that are, you know, dark and dangerous, right? And like integrating that and accepting it, but then like taming it instead of like externalizing it and saying like I'm not that, right? <laughs> right. So yeah, it's uh, there's a there's a functionality to it if you're if you're going to in include it and in being like just you know robust about how you decide stuff. Um, yeah, it's it makes sense. Um, hmm. I. I don't know. Thanks. Thanks for exploring that Jersey. So <laughs> definitely. I think it passed the prototype test of big okay. topic. All right. We will take that on in the weeks to come. All right. Speaking of which we record this show, we stream it live uh, Thursdays at noon Eastern 11 a.m. Central. Uh, and then collect it as a podcast at leanintoart.com and patreon.com slash leanintoart. We'll be back with another episode soon. Until then, I have been Jersey Drozd of leanintoart.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I have been Rob Stenzinger, also of leanintoart.com. And I'm on Instagram as Rob Stenzinger. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. 
You can also follow us on Twitter at the user Lean Into Art, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.